church family, good morning. Good morning. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You ready? Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, church family, good morning again. It is great to see you out here on the lawn. It is great to know that all of you are out there, too. Today is a great and grand day in the life of this church every year, for today is CE Sunday, a day to celebrate all of the learning of this past year and to thank all those who have been a part of it all. Can I actually ask for those of you here on the lawn, if you have been part of learning at this church this year, whether teaching, whether part of a book group, whether part of another kind of study, whether part of spiritual direction, would you just raise your hand if you have been part of it? It is so great to see how this church engages this, and I think the Apostle Paul would be happy too. The Apostle Paul, you see, was convinced of many things. He was convinced of God's love. He was convinced of God's ongoing saving work. He was convinced that God is still speaking and God is still on the move. But if you read all of his letters, Paul also wrote over and over again that a life of faith is a life of movement and therefore a life of learning. Don't be conformed to this world, Paul said, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Paul wrote about working out our faith. He wrote about seeing more clearly. He wrote about an ever deeper becoming by knowing. Knowing about love, knowing about kindness, knowing about freedom, knowing that we are children of God. So as we worship today, let us remember that all of this is about our becoming. All of it is about faith and life. All is about joy and blessing and gratitude. And all of it, Paul would say, is about grace not just any grace, but amazing grace. So I invite you to take a deep breath as our kids choir brings us into worship with that truth of amazing grace.
join me in the call to worship. Brothers and sisters, boys and girls. Even if, even if you're tired and worn out, lay down the heavy things you are carrying. Listen to what Jesus wants to tell you. See if you can discover how Jesus wants to use you. For Jesus is humble and gentle. Sisters and brothers, grace and peace to you as we gather to worship God and to celebrate the educational ministries of this church year. Welcome to one and to all. Welcome to those gathered in this breezy sanctuary as you gather in sanctuary wherever you might be. This, like so many days, is a day of many meetings. If you look at the calendar, it's a day of many designations. Today, we worship as CE Sunday. Today, the world also pauses to recognize Juneteenth. And today also is Father's Day. And so on this layered day, I welcome you in 
the name of the one Jesus called Abba, Father. I welcome you in remembrance of the way God brought the people forth from slavery in Egypt with a mighty outstretched arm. I welcome you in the image of the prodigal son's dad, arms flung open, forgiveness flowing forth. And in the power of the Spirit, who does not make us slaves, but brings about freedom to live as the children of God. I welcome you in the spirit of the psalmist, who sang forth, as the Father shows compassion, so God loves us. And in the way of faith, they call each of us to loose the chains of injustice, and to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, and to break every yoke. Friends, welcome to the worship of God here at the First Congregational Church of the United Church of Christ in Stockbridge. Welcome on a day where we celebrate fatherhood in all of its forms, on a day where we remember God's ongoing gift of freedom, a day where we give thanks for a holy image of fatherhood, even if the earthly one sometimes. So friends, welcome. We welcome you just as you are and however you feel about this day and those who have been a father to you. Welcome whether this day brings up blessings or burdens and know that you are welcome here because you are loved and precious. You are needed here and because we gather in the midst of the holy presence of God who is both father and mother to us all. Friends, welcome to worship on this day and place. I want to send a welcome out there to Jerry and Lois Hafner. Welcome to Ray and Sangdao. Welcome Pat LeVaugh. Welcome Shirley Blanchard. Welcome Ginny and David. Welcome to Jim Irwin, to Maurice Peterson, to Ann and Jill Roy. Welcome to Roger Darrow, to Joel and Donna Jacobs. Welcome to Xiao Bing. Welcome to Elaine Hunter. And welcome to Ken LaBresh and Jan Marler. So at this point, amidst that welcome, I want to invite our kids to offer yet more beauty. Swing low, sweet chariot.
Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Elizabeth Evans, and I'm here to share you share with you a little this morning about Sunday school this past year. Um, kiddos, if you want to stay there, or if you want to come and join us on the rug with Miss Gwendolyn, we'd love to have you. <laughs> Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Your music is beautiful. Yeah. So this is CE Sunday. Thank you all for being here, and thank you for letting us um, reflect a little this morning on what has been a eventful and challenging um, and wonderful year of resuming Sunday school. So obviously, as you all know, we faced some challenges the last couple years and um, suspended Sunday school for um, a while just to keep everyone safe and um, so on. But we have one big um, thank you just over the last couple years, and a big thank you is hardly enough. Um, I'll just start with a thank you to Jill Wheat, who, when we went offline at church, we went online for the children's resources, and Jill was instrumental in getting our lessons online and engaging with the families and the kids and keeping us connected um, through what was a very challenging time for a lot of families. Um, and so uh, we were able to, while we were far apart, kind of continue the spirit of Sunday School. So I hope some of you have, over the last couple of years, been able to see the videos online. Um, we've, we've had um, some of you all been so generous enough to be guest speakers, guest readers, make little videos. You know, Gwendolyn and I did a few videos of, of Bible passages and crafts, um, but Jill was really instrumental in keeping our families and the education piece um, of our church connected. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to, to Jill. Um, and then the good news, of course, was that this past September, we were able to resume Sunday school in person. And we took a little bit of a different model and we um, decided to just do one big Sunday school class. In the past, we've done kind of broken up by age. And did you guys have fun at Sunday school? Um, we, you know, I think we had everywhere from myself and my child and Jake were, you know, the amount of participants on Sunday to 13 kids all together. And no matter how many kids showed up, we had Sunday school teachers um, teaching and kids wanting to learn um, and wanting to play. Um, you know, a big part of what we did was bring things outside, obviously. So we did a lot more outdoor time. Um, does anybody have a favorite memory of something we did in Sunday school outside? Yes. The streamer decorating the stick. Jake, will you come here and hold up one of the streamers for me? So this was when we resumed in March. And it was our first Sunday school back. And it was me teaching. And Jake and Gwendolyn were my two students for the day. And we came outside and we enjoyed the beautiful weather. And we got to use cray paper and sticks. And basically we called them joy sticks. And we pretended we were little zealots running around the church lawn and having fun, right? You got it? It's now all windy and it got all... Stuff as simple as this. It's made. Can I have a hold on? <laughs> <laughs> so, can you wave your, your stick? It was 
stuff as simple as this, arts and crafts, um, talking about Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Gospels, learning together, playing together. Um, we had a lot of highlights. We, we used our, the SPARK curriculum um, again this year, and we did our best to keep it fun, to keep it light. Um, you know, again, we had uh, pauses throughout, throughout the year, but resuming these last few months has been, uh, I believe, really joyful for myself and the children. You'll also note here, this is, um, we're bookending this with Rally Day that happened in September when we welcomed all the kids back when Sunday school restarted. And this was a beautiful piece of art that, again, Jill helped spearhead. And this was the children's handprints. Do you guys see some of your handprints on there? You see your blue handprints? Yeah. So this was us coming back together again as a church family, as the church lessons. Um, and so Rally Day was a fun day. And now we have CE Sunday just to reflect and share and thank. Um, what we also did just last week when we were um, finishing up Sunday school, I asked the kids, um, we were doing a lesson on, does anybody remember what the lesson was last week? Remember? Sort of. <laughs> what was it? Was it Paul and the Philippians? Yeah, Paul and the Philippians. And Paul was writing a letter from jail. And so what did we do when we were reading the Bible? Did we crawl under the table? Yes, we got to crawl under the table. We were getting a little rowdy, so why not go under the table and pretend that we were in jail, writing our, our letters to the Philippians? <laughs> Um, and we made some beautiful art. Again, um, someone want to help me grab a... So the kids that were with me last week, yeah. There you go. We found the Greek word for constantly, as in God is constantly with us. And we don't have all the letters, because we didn't get that far. <laughs> But we, uh, I threw out the Greek letters and each of the kids took responsibility for decorating them um, and they had a great time, you know. So I'd love to say that I was a more prepared Sunday school, school teacher. I wasn't always, it was kind of seat of my pants what, was, what the kids were in the mood for and they were always in the mood for arts and crafts, running around outside, having fun. Um, so did you guys like this activity? It's pretty good. So, you know, so we made it through with some really wonderful, energetic kids um, who learned, I think, some really lovely lessons. Um, and then I'll just finish up. Thank you, guys. You want to, you can sit down with your your lovely letters. We no, I don't read Greek, so I don't exactly even know what these letters are. But um, we'll get Brent to decipher it. For us later. <laughs> the important part is that we were having fun. Um, just to finish, so I asked the kids last week um, what they were thankful for at church, um, being part of Sunday school and, and what makes them happy about being part of church. And I got children's time. You guys like children's time coming up, sitting with friends? That's a good one. I got the Easter egg hunt. No brainer there. We had a lot of fun with the Easter egg hunt. Church picnic, which said, you know has been offline lately, but the kids remember it. So they have great, great memories of church picnic. Coffee hour, another greatest hit. No surprise there. Why do you guys like coffee hour? The snacks? Yeah, the snacks are pretty great. Um, and Sunday school. So, you guys like coming to Sunday school sometimes? Yeah, it's pretty fun. Does anybody else have another favorite thing that they like about Sunday school? What? What do you like? She likes making her little things. She likes gluing um, tissue paper to the table last week. That's what she, she likes. So, um, so, uh, what did you like, Cleo?
be like making a stick person on a table and then it completely fell apart when we picked it up. So that was the lesson we were doing about the ascension. And we were drawing or making little figures of God going up into the sky. And Khalil made a very cool stick guy that immediately fell apart outside. So, um, and please, if you have a moment, take, a, take some time to just walk through the Sunday School classroom in the back. There's some beautiful other little pieces of art um, from our Sundays together. These kids showed up. They worked hard. They had fun. Um, and can we give them a round of applause for just being wonderful members of our church family? Again, it's been a challenging year, but so wonderful, so sweet to see Sunday School come together. And there's a lot of hard, uh, you know, behind the scenes work that goes into it. Um, and I'll go into that more later and thanking the teachers. But these kiddos make it all worth it. And we say thank you. Thank you guys. So, will you now, we're gonna say something together that we say at the end of children's time, which is what normally? The Lord's Prayer. So in your bulletin, um, as you may see, we're gonna all say it together. All right, thank you. are you guys gonna can you guys stand up and help me lead it? Who knows the Lord's Prayer? They're really good. Who doesn't know the Lord's Prayer yet? Yeah, not you. We've been working on that. And that's, again, the whole part of what Sunday School and just being part of this church family is about. And so, again, thank you. So let's go ahead and start saying the Lord's Prayer all together. We'll leave, we'll leave the congregation. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. Glory forever. Amen. Good job, guys. Now you can go back and do your beauty. 
might be briefer than I um, hope, but she'll keep me honest. So. Um, and again, at this point, um, just wanting to recognize and thank our Sunday school teachers. So, any Sunday school teachers here this morning, please stand up. I spy Ted, Paul, Ken, Cindy, Jill, Big round of applause. And so not with us this morning are Josh Paul, um, Elizabeth Young, and and you. She was a great helper, but um, Ted, Ken, Paul, Cindy, Jill, thank you. Thank you, thank you. As you just saw up here, I mean, this group of kids that we got to be with um, this past year was really wonderful and really special. Um, I remember um, being recruited by Patty Fox about three years ago to come and teach Sunday school and help with um, organizing and so on. Um, my tenure on the CE board has concluded and I'm happily kind of passing some of those responsibilities on but um, it really has been a joy to work with this group of people who have taught me and inspired me to be a Sunday school teacher which I didn't really know how to be and to be honest I thought you it was going to be what this ball is made out of what that ball is made out of um, I thought at times it would be very easy, and it is kind of easy, so everybody sign up for next year. Um, but uh, at other times, again, very challenging, very rewarding, very, um, very, funny. very fun. Um, and very and fun. I just wanted to share with you, I asked some of our teachers very to share funny. some of the highlights from um, this past year, and I got some wonderful responses. Um, we, uh, again, we kind of combined the Sunday school class and then we also tried to make sure that our youth group came together for a few special events throughout the year, as you might have seen from some wonderful um, activities that were going on. Um, Josh shared that it was wonderful to come together with the children. There was a youth group hike around Benedict Pond um, and then helping make Easter eggs for Ukraine was a and stuff the Easter eggs for the Easter egg hunt for Sunday were great team building activities and spirit building ex experiences for both the youth and the adults. Um, so seeing youth group do these fun adventures and also help our younger children was um, wonderful. Um, and who can guess what's inside the okay. ball? Um, We had a wonderful activity at Advent Sunday as well. Um, and then, what, what I hide in. Um, so Advent party on Sunday, um, Ted mentioned a wonderful rope boat across the parking lot um, in a reenactment of Paul's second missionary journey. That's wonderful. We got outside and pretended to be in a boat and crossed the parking lot. That's education in action. So thank you, Ted, for making that beautiful experience. Um, and just the general getting involved with, intensely involved with whatever art project was around and uh, seeing so much joy with the kids in play so and song. Joy and breaking their heart. Yeah. Um, and Ted shared a favorite quote that after participating in youth choir, reading a dedication of the funds for Ukraine and holding forth during the children's sermon, Ruth Wheat said, I think I've been responsible for about 90% of the service so far. <laughs> so thank you, Ruth. You're always a wonderful leader. By the way, it's Ruth's birthday. So. Oh, um, um, Jill just saying, seeing the kids return to the building. 
So seeing the children return to the building in the classroom, um, whether it was two kids or 13, um, seeing the kids make the choice how to spend the Kiva fund, which they did for the Advent Party fundraiser, um, communicating with the families and seeing how we could engage. Um, and cupcakes. Cupcakes are always a highlight. Um, the committee is working together, the CE board, um, supporting the Sunday school and various missions. Costume Bible characters in the service, the Christmas pageant, um, the, uh, the Heifer International collection that the children put together, um, the youth having fellowship with their younger siblings. So again, this kind of all-inclusive class and seeing older kids help the younger kids was really beautiful. Um, the rally day, which started our sign fill again, messy painting and uh, chalk and and tattoos. Um, uh, there was a beautiful lesson that Jill did about a fig tree and planting that, and then the children also planted marigolds. Um, you probably can see um, in the back garden. So getting our hands dirty, getting outside, having fun, being inspired. Um, and then I'll share something else that Cindy mentioned was um, I'm going to wrap it up. She needs to go to the bathroom. But um, Cindy just sharing on Pentecost, they had fun making flame headbands um, and more crepe paper fun. Crepe paper is a lot of fun in Sunday school. Um, uh, and Cindy shared a really beautiful thought that I will leave you all with, um, with that having the children get to know me in Sunday school and then being glad to see me at coffee hour or in the church parking lot is amazing. My very favorite thing is that every Sunday morning, running start from afar, grinning, almost knocking you over, exuberant hug around my legs, it feeds my soul and fortifies me for the whole week. So, these children mean a lot to us. Our Sunday school teachers are treasures and gifts to this con congregation. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your wonderful service. Um, we have a small token gift of beautiful little mini rose plants and a yummy chocolate bar, because all teachers love chocolate bars. <laughs> um, so I want to um, uh, just pass those along as a very small token of our humble affection for all that um, our Sunday school teachers did for our children this year. And I, again, I will put in a plug. We always need more Sunday school teachers. Maybe you don't know how to do it. Maybe you haven't done it in many years. Maybe you don't have kids. Maybe you do have kids, whatever it is. You have something to offer. You are a teacher just by being a part of our congregation. Um, we're a, it's a special group of people and um, again, inspiring, wonderful about education, about love, um, fostering these wonderful little souls. Um, again, thank you for uh, those teachers who weren't present. Um, Elizabeth Young uh, chimed in with some church stewardship lessons during the Capitol campaign, which was great. Jill, again, a big thank you for her all nine resources that have just been tireless this past year. And again, thank you for supporting our children and our teachers. So appreciate it. Microphone over to you. Oh, right in front of her. Okay. All right. Does that sound all right? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm Vicki Cooper, and I'm a new uh, member of the Christian Education Committee. But um, I take advantage of all the um, offerings of for adults for Christian education. I have for many years. Um, I'm a librarian, and um, I love to read, so any opportunity to um, read and learn more about the Bible and my faith, um, I take advantage of and have for lots of since I joined this church. And then um, the pandemic hit, and um, I wasn't sure what my life was going to be like. I was a little bit frightened, to say the least. 
And along came all these offerings um, of, to study the Bible and read books on Zoom. So I was very, very happy to be able to do that. And I think every single week, practically, I did something. I had the Bible study or a book group or uh, a prayer group. I, I, it really connected me, even though I wasn't be able, able to be here in person, I was connected to the church and felt um, that I could well, get through the pandemic, um, hopefully, and certainly help me get through the pandemic. Of course, the pandemic isn't going over <laughs> Anyway, um, so I took recently um, a covenant study, which was practically a whole year of studying the Bible and focusing on the idea of covenant, um, which I didn't even quite know what that meant until I took the study. And um, then I took a book group with, um, studying the book Hope by Jane Goodall. And I um, also keep up every week, pretty much every week, doing a Bible study with um, Rick Floyd, um, which also, I, I don't know how many years I've been doing that, but anyway, a lot of years. And so, as you can see, I have been very busy um, and engaged in adult Christian education with Bible studies and book groups and prayer groups, etc. Well, anyway, I'm going to focus um, pretty much on the um, Luke study. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't even read the... Oh well, we'll get a brain here. I think I'll read it right now because I'm going to focus on that too. It's about the transfiguration and it's um, Luke 9, 28 through 36. Okay. That's a little bit ahead of me. All right, let's see if I can find it here. Hear me okay? Yes. Are not hearing me? Yes. Oh, okay. oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, Jesus has just foretold his death and resurrection to his disciples. Um, and after eight days after these things, oh dear. and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. I'll be talking about that. Um, but first of all, um, the Luke study was 
went because it um, revealed a lot of things to me um, and taught me a lot of things about the life of Christ um, from Luke's perspective. Um, it connected me to the Old Testament. Luke connects to the Old Testament with many references and important points of Luke were care for the sick and the poor and the less fortunate, the roles of um, women in Jesus' ministry, um, and Jesus' life leading up to his crucifixion and resurrection and his relationship to his disciples and all the healings that went on. Um, then this transfiguration um, is sort of a key point in the whole book and it's one of my favorite passages for many reasons. Uh, it, there's Elijah and Moses are up there with Christ on the mountaintop and Christ has just told his uh, disciples before that about his death and resurrection. And here Christ now is sort of transformed into a heavenly being. And it's like a meeting of heaven and earth. And transferring the law represented by Moses and the prophets um, represented by Elijah to the new covenant in Christ. Um, and God is speaking and says, listen to him, meaning listen to Jesus. Um, the symbolism of the um, transfiguration, I, I love it because um, to me it means there's more than this earthly life. I mean, here Elijah and Moses have come back from death, basically. So, and to me, it's sort of proof that there is life beyond death. And I've always held on to that because that's very important. And it's more than just life here on earth. Um, so, Bible studies in general have strengthened my faith and helped me have a deeper understanding of the Bible. They've helped me through the pandemic and difficult times and improved how I relate to others and this world. Bible stories aren't just stories for me. They're helping me understand myself as a human being in a very imperfect world and keep my faith strong and hope in Christ. Um, one of my favorite uh, verses from the Bible is, Be still and know that I am God. That's from Psalm. And it's, it's one of my favorite Bible verses because to me it means focus on God and one's neighbor and not on oneself. And listen to God as I understand him and have learned about him through the Bible and my Bible studies offered by Christian education for this church. So um, I'm very thankful to have been, um, had the opportunity to take all these studies and um, book groups and um, it's just been wonderful, especially during the pandemic to keep me connected to everybody here and just to strengthen my faith so that I could be hopeful and strong through the pandemic and through life. And so I will continue um, and hopefully the, the church will keep offering these wonderful studies. And they, we get these books uh, by Caligula um, that go along with our Bible studies. So we have a, a book to, to refer to each week and read from, and then you, of course, have your Bible to read from as well. And a lot of the studies I have, have done have had these books that go along with them, and then, of course, I've read a lot of books as well that's um, with the book groups. So anyway, 
that's my spiel. <laughs> each of you now into a time of silence, that you might let the prayers of your heart and your life bubble to the surface and even given over to God. Let us be in a time of silent prayer. God for the gift of the warmth of the sun and the gift of the warmth of our children we give you thanks for the breath of life and the breath of learning we give you thanks for the many blessings that you bestow upon us and the chance to come together as community we give you thanks today we lift up along with Xiao Bing a prayer of joy for Ronnie recovering from her surgery well we lift up this morning another prayer of joy for Maurice Peterson. That the YouTube angels have come through and the service is going out. And finally, loving God, we know that beyond our blessings, beyond our gifts, we know that you are with us in the midst of everything and anything that life throws our way. And so this morning we pray along with Joe and Ann Roy for dear Anna Ambrose, who suffered a stroke yesterday. Loving God, for these prayers that we have named with our lips, for the prayers that dance on our hearts, and all the prayers that are forming in the way we live, we give them to you, we entrust them to you. We ask you, loving God, to simply listen to your children praying. And let us say together, Amen.
Hello, everybody. They entice us to come up here and speak by putting it in the sun. So thank you for that location. Uh, we just, we'll keep this brief. We just wanted to share a few things that we're so grateful for that this church has given us. Uh, what's the first thing? For our church family and all of our friends that we make here at church. For opportunities to deepen our faith and, and practice with you all. For all the sweets and treats that usually mommy and daddy doesn't let us uh, let her have. And so in this time we ask that you, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, take this opportunity to give what you're able to uh, keep all of the sweets and treats that this wonderful church offers us each and every week uh, flowing. So thank you. Thank you.
On my own, what I have to give doesn't amount to much in the light of all you have given to me and in the face of so much need. Put together as a congregation, what we have, what we offer you here in love becomes more, not simply added together, but somehow multiplied in its usefulness. We ask you to bless our gifts and with the addition of your blessing, just as it was with the loaves and fishes, there is enough for all. Amen. She knows I'm cold. Friends, you may be seated. A couple of quick invitations as we close up our worship for today. First of all, if you want to come to the church office, you are welcome to do so Monday through Friday. Just don't come tomorrow. We will be closed in honor of Juneteenth, and so you will arrive and you will find the doors shut. If you look over here, though, you will notice that there are some items on a table. The Service League had a pop-up sale yesterday in Stockbridge, and they have some plants and some baked goods and some other things left over. You can please stop over there on your way out along with the food and fellowship. Two quick announcements to be made. I want to invite Linda Russell to come forward first. We've been talking a lot about education and learning, and she has an invitation for you along that way. Sure. Hi, I'm Linda Russell, and um, one of the opportunities, such as what Vicki Cooper told us about, is a book study the four Tuesdays in July at 4 o'clock. And we'll be studying this book, very casual study, discussion group. But like me, you may have met Bishop Michael Curry at Meghan and Harry's wedding in Windsor on television. <laughs> but um, he is charming. He is a faith-filled man. He has had lots of struggles in his life and has a lot to teach us. So if you're interested in joining me, my contact information is on page seven in today's bulletin, or you can grab me after church to let me know you'd love to join us. Fun times ahead. And finally, as a church, we gather in meetings to make important decisions. I want to invite our clerk, Jeremy, to come forward and to do a call for a special meeting of the congregation. To all members of the First Congregational Church of the United Church of Christ, Stockbridge, Massachusetts. In accordance with the bylaws of the church, the church council hereby calls a special meeting of the church for Sunday, June 26, 2022, immediately following worship. The business to be transacted is as follows. One, to call to order, and two, to act upon the business. A, to authorize Kathy Clark as moderator, to sign a memorandum of understanding with the Berkshire Waldorf High School regarding the establishment of a 180-day period of exclusive relationship during which we would explore the possibility of and the mechanisms for entering into partnership regarding the use of Proctor Hall and be to appoint a task force to represent the congregation in that work. Thank you. Just so that you're aware, even as we speak, an email is going out to all of your email inboxes that contains all the information that you need. Should you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to call the church office. Just don't call tomorrow. And now, I want to invite Jake up to lead you in the sending charge.
Um, it's uh, 